G'day, I'm Tom from Flow Mountain Bike and today we've got another Burley Enduro Bike in for testing. This time it's the all new Scott Ransom, which is a really interesting rig and one you could say that is somewhat futuristic with its new looks and tech. As you might know, the Ransom is their hard hitting enduro race bike, but now with a brand new six bar linkage design, packaged with 170 mils of front and rear travel. It's also mixed wheel compatible this year, which we're really stoked to see amongst a bunch of new features. So hang around for the rest of the video to find out a little bit more. You can also head to our website to read the detail reviewed as we get stuck into the finer details of this crazy race machine. Straight off the bat, you'll notice the new Ransom has a similar look to other bikes in the Scott range, now coming with its internally mounted rear shock. It's a really sleek design, but it's also practical as it keeps dirt and grime away from the suspension. Whilst it may look similar to other Scott bikes, it's very different once you take a closer look. As we mentioned, the Ransom is now designed around their new six link system. And the engineers at Scott explained to us that they went for this as it allowed them to tune the kinematics quite specifically. It gives them more independent control over things like anti-squat, anti-rise, and the overall progression of the suspension. Scott sent us their 910 model, which comes in at $11,299. We have a size medium here for testing, and it comes with a 458mm reach, 440mm chainstays, 63.8 degree head angle, and a 77.2 degree seat angle. The weight without pedals and set up tubeless was 15.7 kilograms. And for reference, I'm 180 centimetres tall, so the medium frame was on the smaller side for me. This did have some benefits, as it made quite a big and burly bike a little more manoeuvrable. Leah also spent a lot of time on the bike, and for her, the medium frame was more true to size. As we briefly mentioned earlier, there is some flexibility with geometry and wheel size options in the new Ransom. It comes with adjustable headset cups, and these are really easy to use. All you need to do is spin them around 180 degrees, and that will allow you to choose between a 65 or 63.8 degree head angle. There is also a flip chip that allows you to run mixed wheels, and we're really pleased to hear that in doing this, you not only keep a similar geometry, but you also have the same kinematics with the suspension in both wheel options. Along with the new six link suspension, there are also a bunch of other new features. We've now got internal storage. It's not a huge space, but everything you need for a trail side repair is there, packaged neatly into the Syncross Matchbox kit, which comes with the bike. Now with the shock mounted internally, you're probably wondering how difficult it is to change settings or even swap suspension. Thankfully, Scott have designed this well, and once you pop off the cover, you'll have more than enough room to tinker with all the settings that you need to get to. Setting sag and checking to see whether you've bottomed out is also easy. In fact, it's easier than on a regular system. There is an external meter that shows you exactly where the suspension depth is at. As we briefly mentioned earlier, there is some flexibility with geometry and wheel size options in the new Ransom. Scott, in our experience, have always designed bikes that pedal quite well, and the Ransom sticks true to this. The pedaling platform is stable, even with the shock fully open. However, to gain better performance, Scott have incorporated their track lock system, which is conveniently located on the handlebars. This gives you three positions, a fully open one, a ramp control setting in the middle, and their dedicated climb position, similar to a fully locked out setting. The handlebar lever to access them meant that we use these settings a lot more than we might typically. The feature may divide some opinions on whether you need this on the bike, but when you actually use it, you do quickly notice the benefits. We actually found some handy uses of this track lock system when descending, not only climbing, but we'll talk more about that later. As often the case with modern enduro bikes, they aren't the most amazing climbers, but at least this has some key features that make it comfortable to do so. We would like to note that the climbing ability, as you might expect, was significantly better in the full 29er setup. So if you're gearing up for a long day, this would be something to consider. The team at Scott have developed this bike alongside their enduro race team, meaning their primary goal was to make sure it's stacked up against the clock. This is evident in the way the bike performs at high speeds through rough terrain. Looking at my personal preference, the medium was slightly small, but even so, I could feel the stability and control under heavy braking. I can only imagine this would improve more so if I sized up to the large. However, being on the smaller bike meant that cornering and general maneuverability was greatly improved. This would be something to consider in regards to your priorities if you find yourself between sizes. 
The bike corners really well with its balanced geometry. It gives you a centered feel through both fast turns as well as some slower, tighter corners. By throwing the smaller rear wheel in, this greatly improves this characteristic. The slightly smaller frame and mixed wheels made for a bike that was super fun in tight turns. Whilst testing this bike, we kept in mind that a lot of racers will be interested in this rig. So we tried to test the bike with a race mentality at times. This bike definitely has a low and planted feel. It likes to hug the ground, meaning that it tracks really well. Long travel bikes by nature can feel sluggish on flatter terrain. However, we found a way to combat this slightly. The track lock ramp setting, which is the middle setting on the track lock system, can be used when going downhill, not just when climbing. For example, in a race run, if you were presented with flatter, flowier sections of trail, the shot could be sent to the ramp up mode, which is the middle setting. When we did this, we noticed it provided a firmer platform to push against when pumping and trying to find backsides of rollers to generate speed. Having the lever on the handlebar meant that it was really easy to swap between settings. From a purely racer mindset, this is the kind of thing that can win you back a few seconds over a stage. So again, from us, we're giving the track lock lever another tick. The Ransom 910 comes with a really appropriate and thought out spec, as you would expect for a bike in this price range. The suspension is covered by Fox with a 38 up front and a Float X Nude specifically designed for the Ransom. The Fox 38 with the Grip 2 damper is a fork we know well, and we've had good experiences with it in the past. It can take a little bit of time to set up perfectly for your preferences, but as a fork that has been around for a while now, there are plenty of great setup resources out there. As for the rear suspension, we found the Float X Nude Shock to be a really interesting bit of kit. Paired with the unique suspension design, we noticed the rear end of the bike to perform extremely well. The Nude X has bearings in the lower shock eye, and we could feel the improved small bump sensitivity because of this. As the shock is tucked away from grime and dirt, and not worry too much about wear and tear from the elements. If you do have a shock that you're particularly fond of, Scott has made sure that a wide range of those will fit inside the internal cavity. The bike comes with SRAM's GX Access Transmission Drivetrain, a group set that has performed well and is very fitting for the futuristic look of the new bike. Also from SRAM, you get their code brakes. With these, you get plenty of stopping power as well as a lot of adjustment to get the feel just right. We're stoked to see a double down tire on the rear in the form of a Maxxis Dissector. The model they've gone for up front is the Maxxis Asagai, a really popular choice for bikes of this nature. The new frame design means that the bike can take longer dropper posts as well. The size medium can take up to a 180 mil post, whereas the size large and extra large can fit in a 210 millimeter dropper. The one spec choice we had an issue with was the integrated stem and handlebar, not because of the quality, but more geared towards personal preference. Contact points on bikes are very specific to each rider's preference. So this all in one unit won't suit everyone. For me riding a slightly smaller frame, I would have liked to raise the front end a little bit with a higher rise bar and maybe a slightly longer stem. This is doable, but you'll need to buy the Acros top spacer that allows you to do so. If you do luck out and the stock bar and stem suit you, you'll have a really nice bit of integrated kit up front straight out of the box. Wrapping things up now. So $11,299, it's not a small amount of money, but what you get for that is a bike that has been extremely well designed and equally executed in the high quality manufacturing. We also believe the performance of this bike is right up there as one of the leading enduro race bikes. Personally, I love the mixed wheel compatibility and the fact that it keeps the same kinematics is a huge tick from us. For everyday riding, I would go for the mullet setup and switch to the full 29er when racing or going on longer rides. We're really excited to see more of these bikes out on the trails and also we'll have a close eye on how it performs on the racetrack in the not too distant future. For more information about this bike, please check out our full written review over at flowmountainbike.com. We hope this has been helpful and let us know what you think about this new space age race machine from Scott.